One of the things that we would constantly hear around our house when our girls were little was, you're not the boss of me. And I would remind them that, yes, indeed, I am the boss of them. <laughs> There's something inside of us, isn't it? It just doesn't want anybody to stand in judgment of us. And maybe that's why we are so plagued with the fear of people. One of the greatest diminishers of life is the fear of people. The Bible says it this way, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. What does that teach me? I can't expect from people what I can only get from God. People are not my confidence. People are not my supply. People are not my solution. Nobody can fix me. But we fear people, don't we? For the Holy Spirit, God's gift does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong, therefore loving them and enjoying them. What are we supposed to do with the weird people we're related to? Love them and have some sense sense of joy that we're not as messed up as they are. Amen. <laughs> we do fear each other. We fear people and it diminishes our lives. There are five ways I want to list that I can think of. You can probably think of more, but I see them over and over again. Five ways we fear people. First, we fear what people might think of me, Right? What are people going to think about me? You know, I got good news for you. They ain't thinking about you. <laughs> Ladies, have you ever said, well, I just, I'm afraid that if I wear this dress, I've worn it twice now in two years and they will remember. <laughs> no, they won't remember. That's why God invented blue jeans. Going to hear an amen. amen. They all look the same, right? We're afraid of what people might think of us. Secondly, we're afraid of what people might say about us. That, you know, somehow we're not the cool, you know, we're not the in group and, you know, we're not the one that everyone talks about and, you know, the one on the tip of everyone's tongue. We're afraid that somebody might, you know, we may do something that people don't like and they'll say something bad about us. And to that I say, grow up. The only way to never be criticized is to have nothing, do nothing, and know nothing, and then we'll criticize you for being a bum, right? <laughs> People are going to say bad things about you, and you just grow up. Get over it. You cannot live small enough life to avoid criticism. There are a lot of cynics out there, a lot of cynics who call themselves Christians, And I know I say this way too much, but there are some people around, I'm around that call themselves Christians that I feel like I have to take a bath after I get through being around them. I'm just drenched in this sad m misery and pain and oh, you know, their God is so small. I'm afraid of people, what, what may people may say about me. I'm afraid of what they may think about me. Thirdly, I'm afraid of what they might do to me right? What, what they're going to do to me. I remember my first day in seminary, the president of the seminary had sent me to his office to get something. I thought, this is cool. I'm going to be the seminary president's pet. And I went in to his secretary and I said, and I used his last name I won't say what it is because some of you will know who. I said, so-and-so sent me to get this. She said, who? I said, so-and-so. Who? So-and-so. Who? We did about six who's. <laughs> Doctor so-and-so. Yes, that's it. That. Don't you ever let me catch you. Shut up, woman. <laughs> really? But I knew if I'm, you know, I, hey, I'm, I play the game. If I got on the bad side of the president, I could be there a long time, right? You know, you, you've been there. 
People you're afraid of because you're afraid of what they'll, they'll fire you or they won't promote you or they'll pass you over or when they get in the next wave of downsides and you'll be on the list. We've all been there. We're afraid of what people may say about us, what they might not say about us, what they may do to us. But more than that, we fear what people might not do for us. We're, we live in the city of let's get a deal, right? Move to town and I'll help you get a development deal. It took me years to realize what that was. Let me tell you what that is. I don't use that kind of language. <laughs> Psalm 27. Oh, the, oh, the, oh, David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. We think we want people to be God for us. We look at our employers as our little gods. We want to get connected and hooked up. And we feel like that our life is going to somehow be totally turned upside down if just the right people knew our name and helped us and took care of us and hooked us up. We're not only afraid of what people might think about us, what they may say about us, what they may do to us or fail to do for us. One of the greatest fears is the fear of what they may get that I don't get, right? I mean, let's be honest. You know people who are not as smart as you, definitely not as good looking as you, who are doing better than you. That's not right, right? I mean, have you ever looked around? I mean, it's, it's okay to be miserable as long as most of the people you know are, Right? As long as we all in hell, you know, we're fine. But you let one of us get out. I put this in my uh, first book, The Power to Prevail. Paula and the girls and I were years ago up in Oregon for the for Fourth of July. Oh man, you know about heaven. It was Fourth of July in like seventy two, and uh, we were on the the coast, and we went. Uh, down with, where the fishermen would come in and out, and there were crab pots where they just dumped crabs in it. And I noticed that none of the crab pots had any lids on them. And I thought that was really odd. And I asked one of the guys, I said, what, aren't you afraid these crabs are like, I mean, they're, they're alive, they're not dead. I mean, they just brought them in. I said, aren't you afraid that, you know, that they're going to get away? He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, crabs are so selfish. If one of them tries to cl climb out, the other ones will pull him back in. I thought, well, you know, evolution, maybe there's something to it. <laughs> I know an awful lot of people who act that way, don't you? I mean, it's got to be hell on earth. It's got to be hell on earth to be so afraid of life and the future that you, are, you feel doomed if someone doesn't come to your rescue. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to go tell you that someone has come to your rescue. He rode in on a donkey, not a white horse. He hung from a tree and he came up out of a grave. His name is Jesus. And he died that you may be alive and have no fear. No fear of people not afraid of their, of their reward power or their approval power or their punishment power. Not afraid of people. You cannot love people if you're afraid of them. Your children can't love you guys if they're afraid of you. Your wife can't love you men if they're afraid of you. You can't love a person you're afraid of. Amen? Aren't y'all saying something? How y'all doing? All right, just wondering. I know what some of you smart addicts are saying. Okay, it's easy to say what we shouldn't do. How do we get to the place where we're able to really have confidence in God and be free then to love people? Here are 10 practices. 10 practices of people who win with people. I had 23, but I thought maybe that might be stretching it. <laughs> James 3, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure and full of quiet gentleness. Now, does that sound like a lot of Christians you've heard about? 
Then it's peace-loving and what? Courteous. It allows discussion and is willing to yield to others. Is that, that doesn't sound like religion in America to me. Belligerent, self-righteous people who want to argue and condemn and in some cases incite the violence. Right? In God's name, where did we ever get, you can kill a doctor who performs an abortion and call that righteous? You say, well, Dave, if you say that, you may make some people mad. Hopefully. Those kind of people need to be made mad. You need to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. You are not God. This is not your world. You ain't got the whole world in your hand. And God don't need your help. He's doing quite well. I read these verses. I'm thinking, this is, this, sounds, this is not the God of my childhood. Think of this. The wisdom that comes from heaven is pure and quiet. It allows for discussion. It's willing to yield to others. This is how we're supposed to behave. How are we going to be nice and sweet and kind and yielding and win the world to Jesus? You know what? I've stopped trying to win people to Jesus. I figured Jesus can win them on his own. How's that? Amen. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's a good thing. Because most, let's be honest, most of the people who are trying to win people to Jesus are just basically obnoxious. Now, here's the honest, uh, unvarnished truth. I want you to be a Christian. I want you to know and love Jesus and follow him. I believe there is no hope for the future without him. But if you don't want to, ain't no skin off my nose. I mean, seriously. You know what I'm saying? I don't, ha I don't need you to believe this. I mean, there, everything about being a Christian, I'm not all that happy with either. But I just drank the Kool-Aid, dude. I'm just way too deep in this to walk away. I mean, somebody asked a question about, you know, is the earthquake in Japan and the nuclear fallout, all this a judgment of God? No, 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 no. Well, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. That's the best answer I can give you. And who am I to stand up and say whether I know or not? Here's what I do know. I do know that God is good and God is merciful and God is powerful and God can bring something incredibly good out of something really bad. Seem happen over and over again. Amen. And I've heard people say, well, you know what? They did bomb Jer Pearl Harbor. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Whatever. If we're going to go down that road, God should, I mean, we should all be French fried tomorrow. <laughs> we're the ones who dropped the bombs, by the way, just so you didn't know if you knew that or not. I saw on CNN an article of the eight uh, recent uh, climatic events that someone has found, you know, who caused them as a result of God's judgment, all the way from the 911 and Katrina and all this stuff. And that's a just a, that's a, it's stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. If it is a judgment of God, that's God's business, not mine. Amen? What is my job? Here's my job. My job is to trust God and love people. Help them, love them, serve them. This is what the rest of my life is to be made up of. Helping other people make something of themselves and of their lives. Helping people. I do a, a show every Thursday called Renegade's Guide to God. It's on iTunes if you'd like to subscribe to it. And then basically the mission statement is help people know God, love God, and live the life for which they were created. This is what we're all looking for, at least the people I've met. And one of the ways you're going to live the life for which you're created and make something amazing of your life, something significant. Listen, it's not easy I'm looking for. It's hard worth it. I'm going to tell you what, loving people is hard. Phew, people are messed up. I'm not talking about us. I'm just talking about other people. <laughs> I'm not messed up. I'm a member of a weird family, though. I'll have to say this. I mean, there have been people who have been added to my family without my permission. I would have voted no. <laughs> Amen? Ten practices of people who win with people. One, 
right out of the box. They don't demand divinity from the people that they're going to love. They can't be perfect. They aren't going to be perfect. They're never going to be perfect. They can promise to be perfect. They can promise. I mean, one, some of the greatest lies we tell is in a best looking clothes we'll ever wear before a preacher saying I do, right? I mean, those are lofty promises. We look at each other and boy, you know, we look at each other and she's got the wedding dress on and he's got the tuxedo on. You know what happens when a, on a wedding day, a bride, how, how a bride sees the man? She's standing, you know, he, she, standing there, she's looking and comes in and she sees the, uh, the aisle. She comes down the aisle, she turns right, goes down the altar. She looks down and sees him. And in her brain, it says, I'll alter him. I'll alter him. I'll alter him. Yeah. No, no, you won't. No, you won't. He was a redneck when you met him. He's a redneck now, and only Jesus can turn him into a redneck with Jesus. Maybe a pink neck or a blue neck or something, but he's going to always have a little, you know, grits and gravy in him. Amen? Paul asks me all the time, what do you want to eat? I'm embarrassed to say meatloaf. I ought to know better than that. That stuff would kill you, but at least you'd be smiling, I guess. <laughs> Isaiah 41, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be put to shame and disgrace. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Yeah, God says, if you don't take it personal, I will. In our Friday morning Bible study, we're doing the book of Romans. Man, if you haven't been able to attend yet, man, start, you, can, you can dip into this thing. Yeah, it's awesome. It's so much fun. Well, I don't know that we're going to get to the end of the book. We may have to extend our session, but at the very end of the book, there's this really super practical uh, aspect of all this theological knowledge. And Paul says, you know, on the basis of who Christ is and what he's done for you, and the basis of the fact that you are predestined, called, justified, you are glorified, and in God's eyes, as good as in heaven, as though you were already there. In the light of all that, let God get the people who need to be God. That's a lot happier. You want to go to hell? Go to hell, a hell called bitter betrayal. Where all you do is live over the betrayals and the bitterness that has come out of it. You want to live in heaven? Just accept people for who they are. Let God fight your battles. Love people. They do not have divinity. They're never going to have it. I don't care who they are. Second, love people, trust God. Don't get those out of order. I do trust my wife. She's been faithful. She's given me every reason in the world to trust her. But at the end of the day, I got to love her. She's got to love me. I got to love the people around me because people have promised me things they haven't delivered on. How about you? Anyone? Anyone? If you haven't, we'll get to you. People are just a bunch of lying, low life. No, they're not. They're human. Most of the people who make their promises to us, and I mean this, most of the people who make their promises to us mean to keep them. But oftentimes conditions change, life changes, your power, your ability to do what you said you were going to do changes. All these things change. At the end of the day, it becomes a big mess. Unless, of course, you understand that people come in only one size messed up. You married a messed up woman, so why are you mad? You married a messed up man. All of us can see that, can't you? People who win with people, people who do not fear people, but who people, see people as, some, as, 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 a, as a way to live fully in the moment and to do something significant. The people who understand that people are not God, they're never going to be able to give you divinity. You need to trust God and love people. And here's another one, number three. People who win with people communicate an acceptance of people as they are, not as you wish they would be. You can't relate to a person who you feel already rejects you. 
And don't we live in a world, supposedly in America, where we're supposedly quote-unquote Christian, where we are going to court to sue each other in record numbers. Christians suing Christians, even though the scriptures prohibit one brother taking another brother to court. Rejecting people. I mean, what's the reputation of Christians in America? We're loving, sweet, kind, compassionate people. We just love people. We don't judge them on their morality or their lifestyle or their background or the color of their skin. Not so much. You see, those who you fear, you would ultimately dismiss, demoralize, dehumanize, and demonize in that order. Now, if you believe, if you believe that God is not in control, if you reject the notion of the Old Testament where it says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he will turn it whichever way he chooses, then you can demonize our president. I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. You know what our president is? Human. Now, the one before him, he was human. The one before him, he was human. They all are, right? We put people in such places they can succeed because we have expectations no one can meet. People who win with people, on the other hand, accept people for as they are, try to inspire them to be the best they can possibly be, but understand that the first way into your heart is to say to you, I accept you. I may not agree with you. I may not embrace your lifestyle. I may not approve of your lifestyle, but I can accept you as a person worthy to be known, loved, and recognized. Amen? Not afraid of anyone. Not have any prejudice toward anyone else. I can't do that and be a Christian, right? Can I claim to know God and not love the very things that he loves? Aren't your people messy, sinful, angry, sharp, edged people, right? I mean, wouldn't wouldn't life be great if it weren't for the people? (laughs) People who win with people not only accept people as they are, people who win with people are transparent and real. You want to just study the life of Jesus? Jesus came right out and said what was on his mind. He was transparent. He was real. He didn't hide anything. He didn't keep anything back. When he launched his public ministry, he went to the synagogue, opened Luke 4, unrolled a scroll, or, 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 or oh, Luke didn't open it. Sorry, Luke was written a tad bit later. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little excited. It's in Luke 4, by the way. That's, that's if you want to know that. He actually unrolled a scroll of, of, of from Isaiah and said, the Lord has anointed me. He has called me to give recovery of sight to the blind, to set the captives free. He announced his mission, what he was there to do. He announced to the world, I am the Messiah that you have been waiting for. Now, that don't mean much to us. But I didn't fight in words in his day. I am the Messiah, you're the Messiah, you either drunk or you should be drunk. Anybody who claims to be the Messiah and is not the Messiah is not a good person. That's good, Dave, I know. (laughs) It was that notion that converted C.S. Lewis as a 57-year-old Oxford Don atheist who couldn't get away from the three questions as related to Jesus, Lord, liar, lunatic. That Jesus claimed to be who he was and wasn't, he's a liar and he's a bad person. If he claimed to be who he was and he thought he was and he wasn't, he was a lunatic, he's a crazy person. But if he claimed to be divinity, he claimed to be the Messiah and he was the Messiah, he is Lord. I believe he's Lord. You don't believe he's Lord? Okay. Okay. Roll the dice, take your chances, dude. But not me. I know he's Lord. Now, it's just because I've been to seminary, and that's one of the, you know, I've been to seminary, so you need to listen to me. <laughs> but I've lived it. I've walked it. I've been in the valley of death. And I have feared evil. But he has always been with me. 
Because now I'm special. I'm ordained. I understand you, he, he's not going to be with y'all like he is with me. <laughs> but if he's got any time left over, maybe y'all could tweak me something. I'll put you, in the, put you on the list. <laughs> Jesus was transparent. He called a spade a spade, didn't he? He went into the temple when they had turned to a merchant's den. And what did he do? He said, y'all ought not be doing that. <laughs> now he beat the crap out of them. That's what he did. He made a whip and he whooped them. And he turned over the tables. He'd be called under church discipline today, wouldn't he? You're ruining the testimony of the church. <laughs> really? People who win with people are like Jesus. They're transparent. They're real. Jesus told exactly why he's here, what he was here to do. People who win with people are also are trustworthy and reliable. I love this Proverbs 25 reference. Like a broken tooth and a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in time of trouble. You want to excel at life? You can get past most people by just showing up on time. What is it with us? A world of clocks and iPhones and Android phones and clocks, and we're still late? I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about some people we know, right? Do you have a reputation for being someone who's trustworthy? Man, in the crunch, you're not out to lunch. You're there, baby. You're trustworthy. You're reliable. You do what you say you're going to do. You show up and you pull the load. You want to win people to Jesus? Let that be your testimony. You want to see people love God? Let the testimony be that the love of God in you makes you show up. You want to win the people, be transparent, real, be trustworthy, be reliable. I love what the first century philosopher Seneca said, to be feared is to fear. No one has been able to strike terror in others and at the same time enjoyed peace of mind. Amen. Man, when you say I'm still in one piece, I'm saying, you know what? I'm right on plan. God knows exactly where I am. He loves me as I am, not as I ought to be. I am not what I once was, thank God Almighty, but I'm still not yet what I'm going to be. I'm on a journey. I'm growing. I'm maturing. I'm getting stronger. And I am learning more every single day how to trust God for big things and love people as they are, where they are, and inspire them with my life. So, Instead of fearing people, what do we do? We respect them. We accept them. We bring something to the table. What is that? We're redemptive. Go back to that James passage. It is God's wisdom is full of mercy and good deeds. We are men and women of compassion. We don't move into a place and say, see there, this is exactly what you deserve. No, 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 no. Who am I to judge you? I show up and I'm trying to be compassionate and caring and showing the love of God, which makes me active. I'm not standing around saying, who messed this up? Do you work around any people like that? Who messed this up? Why didn't you fix this? Why people? Who people? I challenge you to be a how and a what person. How can I help? What can I do? Amen. I got a beef to pick. It'll take me about 30 seconds. I belong to YMCA. I'm thinking about giving up my membership because of the men who go to the YMCA. Bunch of lazy, no good, selfish men. Do you go, anybody here go to the YMCA? You get them little sweat towels. You bring them into the dressing room. You throw them on the floor. You no good, lazy, godless <laughs> person you pick up your stinking towel did your mama raise you in a barn did she give you a sweat towel and you go in the barn and throw it on the floor gee whiz I'm sick of this okay I'm done can't pick up your stinking sweat towel what are you going to do when you go in the real world and you face some real trouble you got to do some real lifting of some real loads. Can't even throw away your stinking sweat towel. I'm over it. I'm okay. I'm fine. It's not bothering me. You want to do something in your life? 
determined that you are going to take action, move in to the breach. Be merciful, compassionate, redemptive. Here's another thing about people who win with people. They're relatable. You ever been around this? I want to help you out. If you were, this is a bad habit. I want to help you break it. Because if you don't break it, you're going to hell. I have that power. I'll uncheck you. Right? I'll take you off the opt-in list. If you do this, in Jesus' name, please stop it. I know I'm not perfect, but I know you don't have a perfect but either. <laughs> Do you really need to tell anybody this? Are any of us under the delusion you're perfect? Oh, I can't believe you told me that. I thought you were perfect. <laughs> no. Whoever said you were supposed to be? Perfect? No, 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 no. You're not perfect. You know what the word perfect means in the New Testament? It means the end, the goal, a goal toward the end, or the idea of complete. Perfect in the New Testament meant growing. We're growing toward a more complete person. But we're not there yet. You're not there yet. I'm not there yet. Thank God I'm gaining on my demons. Now, if you're not ever gaining on your demons, you messed up. But I don't know about you, perfection, I'm not interested in. I'm just praising God for just a little progress. How about you? A little progress, getting on my demons. I mean, the greatest regret I have in life, I only have one regret in life, and that's the pain I've caused my wife and my children. And I'm trying to gain on that regret, trying to get better. People say when they hear me speak, I really like it because, you know, you, you don't act like you're perfect. Well, I'm not good at actor. I'm not that good at actor. Some of you already know how imperfect I am, right? People need to know that you're relatable. Can they relate to you? Do you have fears? Do you deal with this? Do you struggle with this? The last two. People who win with people, trust me on this one. They're joyful. We run from sad dogs spreading gloom. One of the reasons you hate going to work is you're going to run into Buzzsaw Bob, right? Huh? Or Negative Nelly. You try to avoid them like the plague, right? You don't avoid people who are filled with joy. Come up with someone and say, how you doing? Man, I'm still in one piece, loving life, living the life of my dream. And they'll look at you like, whatever you're snorting, I'll take some. <laughs> Dip, snort, whatever. We'll, we'll, we, either way, we'll go. Right? Joy. They are joyful. Who's joyful? A man or a woman who has hope in God in this life and the life to come. A man or a woman who understands that they're exactly where they ought to be, doing what they ought to be doing. The man or a woman who realizes that the grace of God and the plan of God and the providence of God are bigger than their stupid day. Bigger than their stupidity. Bigger than the worst bad mistake they've ever made. Hey, you have a PhD in DUMB? Join the club. Dave Ramsey's not the only one in that club. Be joyful. Filled with joy. If you have no joy, then something's wrong with your religion, dude. I said it and I'll say it again. If you go into a church and nobody's laughing, I'd go home. I'd run. I'd go get something to eat. <laughs> get me a mess of some meatloaf. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Some brothers here, brothers from another mother. <laughs> I wear this little blue band, band on my wrist, and some of you, we had, I think, I don't know, what it has, but you, oh, it's been over a year, hasn't it? It just simply says, inspire greatness on it. People who win with people are inspiring. Hebrews 6, and we were anxious that you keep right on loving others as long as life lasts. 
Keep on loving others as long as life lasts so that you will get your full reward. Where is the full reward of a full life? A white life well lived is a life living and loving and lifting and inspiring and leading and helping people. That's it. Why did God create the church? Because we would be a gathering of people who understood our limitations, but understood how to hold each other up and bless each other and raise each other up and encourage one another constantly with our lives. By saying, you know what? I may not be perfect, but I'm out there swinging. I get up and suit up and show up and do the next right thing every Monday morning. I'm going to do that to the day I die. And let's just see what God can do with that. God, not even God can park, can drive a parked car. Get up, suit up, show up. Get, get, help me help you. God told me to tell you that. Right? I love what Billy Graham said. Courage is contagious. When a brave man or a woman takes a stand, the spines of others automatically stiffen. I like that. Who are you inspiring with your life? You say, yeah, but my life is a mess. Good, good. That'd be a nice backdrop against which to judge your progress, isn't it? Are you an observer? Are you a participator? Are you a critic and a cynic? Or a man or a woman who understands that people are to be loved and God is to be trusted? Your future is dependent upon you in this world, not in the next, thank God. But your future, the, the influence, the expanse, and the extension of your life in the, is in direct proportion to your ability to love God and love people and love them with his love as long as you live. Wow, that's good. I just thought that up. Somebody tweak that out. Let's pray. Father, I ask you this morning to give us the courage to not be afraid, to not fear our boss, our mom, our dad, to not fear our teacher, to not fear people of different faiths or skin color, to not fear people, but to love you, to trust you, to fear you in a good way, to let you be the Lord of our lives as you are the Lord over your creation. Father, love through us, live through us. Let us be the joy and the inspiration that other people need to believe that they too can make it. I pray for someone here today who feels as though they are stuck and alone that you would clear away that illusion because they are not stuck and they are not alone. They are loved, they are cared for. One of the reasons I know that is they're listening to these words. You have sent someone, a faithful communicator, someone with beautiful feet to stand on the mountain of joy to say, good news, good news, good news. God is good and God is here. We love you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray And All God's people set. Amen. Go get them.